it's still 2023, right? Last year, there was an incredible amount of games, and there were a lot of games that I played, old and new. But this video is about games, but there's also more to it than that. Just talk to you about, I don't know, different things I've been introduced to. I want to introduce all of you to maybe something new, and yeah. The first thing I gotta talk about is Tears of the Kingdom. This game... You know, we have been waiting years and years and years for this game. I mean, it's been like, what, the longest gap of waiting for a new Zelda game ever. And this game is quite controversial. Lots of people don't like its story. People don't like the lore. People have mixed feelings, I guess, about the game. And I'm more so on the positive side um, of the game. Breath of the Wild, to me, was an extremely impactful game for me. Probably the most impactful game um, just for personal reasons. Um, and Tears of the Kingdom, you know, obviously when they first announced it, like I was super excited and man, yo, it just, <laughs> it took so long. But we're not talking about waiting for it. We're talking about the game itself. Tears of the Kingdom is a phenomenal game, but it wouldn't be unless it did not have the amazing abilities that it has. It has Ultra Hand, where you can just take everything in the game, put it together, build whatever you want. There's Fusing, which you can fuse a whole bunch of different materials to your shields, to your arrows, to your weapons, and as for a lot of experimenting in the game. There's Rewind, which for me, I found very situational, but a really cool ability nonetheless. It really comes in handy, and also the... That? Always so sick. And with the ability Ascend, I don't see anybody ever talk about how great Ascend is, because I feel like if Ascend was not in the game, imagine like being in a cave, and then you, you go all the way in the cave, and then you have to walk all the way out. No, instead, you go in the cave, you do whatever you wanna do down there, and then you can just go up and just get out immediately. And it's God tier. Just every time that you use Ascend, it just feels so fluid, so natural. It just is such a core part of the game to me and I love Ascend. Like, it's just so great. These abilities is what makes the game. And I think about going back to Breath of the Wild, and I just can't really think about it. Like, the only ability that I kind of miss from Breath of the Wild is Stasis. Um, but even then, it was still pretty limited and just very situational. But with Tears of the Kingdom, with the amount of stuff that you can do with building and fusing and ascending and using rewind, which is also, to be fair, situational. It would just be kind of hard to go back to Breath of the Wild, but both are incredible games. I both really enjoy both. I'm not saying what is better or anything like that. But one thing that is better <laughs> is the side quests in Tears of the Kingdom. There are a lot of really great side quests in this game, and I was really surprised. Breath of the Wild side quests were pretty good, but the one that stood out was Terrytown. You know, everybody always talks about Terrytown. But with Tears of the Kingdom, there is Terrytown, but there is a lot more. And it was really fun and kind of cozy doing the different side quests in the game, and I quite enjoyed them. I was rather surprised that, um, yeah, they, they were so good. On to my next point. Tears of the Kingdom's map is just so god dang cool. You know, of course you have the sky, and you have the normal world, but you also have the underground. And the thing that I find so ingenious about its map is that the ground level shrines are connected to the light roots that are in the underground. And what makes that so smart is that while you are filling out the map of 
the overworld, you in a way are filling out the map underground. Because every shrine you discover is a shrine or, well, a light route that you are also discovering in the underground because they are in the exact same places. And another thing too, is that this is helpful for finding both. There were a lot of times where I could not find a shrine, but being in the underground and looking at all the different light routes that you can see in the distance, you can pin them or go up to them and then just see where exactly this shrine is. Then go there in the overworld and hey, would you look at that? There's the shrine. I just find this like map discovery system so cool. And I've never seen a game like this where you are over time discovering a map for the other map. And it like, I don't know, is this making sense? I don't know, but it is so cool. I find it really cool. Um, and it helps a lot for finding all the shrines, finding all the light routes. And I found that a lot of fun. With Breath of the Wild, it was really hard finding all the shrines. You would just kind of have to walk around and kind of hope to hear the boop boop. But in this, like you can pretty much find where they are. And you know, maybe it's not just a shrine, it's a shrine quest and you have to figure out what's going on there and all that stuff. But you will find how to find it and it was fun like i really really like that about the game with tears of the kingdom there's a lot that i'm saying great about it but there's something that i have a personal problem with and hopefully after me explaining uh you will understand because this is a me problem and this is not anything i've seen anyone else have a problem with but I just wanted to talk about it because I want to get it off my chest. What makes Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom such incredible games is the world itself and how you interact with it. There's so much stuff you can do with the environment or materials you have or just messing with things in a Bokoblin camp. You know, if you're trying to raid a camp, there's different strategies you can take to invade that camp, take their weapons while they're sleeping, knock down a beehive, you know, stuff like that. But a problem with both of the games is that once you become really powerful with really defensive armor or really powerful weapons, that it kind of removes that. You can go to basically any Bokoblin camp, Moblin camp, Lysophos camp. You can go to anything and just wreck anything. You know, I'll go into some kind of base and I'll just have half a heart taken away. The thing, the reason why I'm saying so much about this is because Breath of the Wild had master mode. And Master Mode in Breath of the Wild was so dumb. It was so stupid. But that's what I originally thought. I played Breath of the Wild every single year on Master Mode during this event that I do called Zeldathon, celebrating the Zelda's anniversary. The thing is, is that I hated it. I thought it was really dumb, created the mobs to become sponges and with a game where you have weapons that break because of durability it makes it extremely difficult to fight anything you kind of avoid fights in a way because even like because they're more spongy they heal over time including the bosses the bosses heal over time and that was something that drove me crazy uh, especially with Thunder Blight and Wind Blight. But over the years, I really came around to love Master Mode because it enhances Breath of the Wild's world. 
and its strategy. Think about the first time you went to Eventide Island in Breath of the Wild. That is a huge highlight that a lot of people have because that's where you get everything taken away from you and it's like the start of the game again, where you have to really strategize and think on what you're doing, the materials you're collecting, everything matters. And that's what made Master Mode so fun. And to not have it in Tears of the Kingdom was really disappointing. Um, and I tried to um, simulate Master Mode by taking half of my hearts away, but it still just didn't really do much. You know, and it's like, oh, don't upgrade your armor, don't, you know, like, then it's just like, well, I might as well just do like a three heart run. But like, that's not what I want to do. The thing with Master Mode is that you want to constantly upgrade your army. You want to constantly, you know, do all of this stuff so you can be at the same level as all the other you know, creatures around you. And it's just like that bar is always like further above you. And the thing is with Tears of the Kingdom is you reach this threshold where you become so overpowered that it doesn't really matter what you do in the game, you know? And, there, and there's so many things with Tears of the Kingdom, like building things, building a a little robot to invade a camp. Why spend time making that when I can just go into the camp and just obliterate everything in like three seconds? It just kind of ruins the game. For me, at least. Yeah, I just really miss Master Mode. Um, if they released Master Mode as like a random free update, man. I would replay the whole game again and I would just love it. Plus, Master Mode is a way you can have a second file on the same Switch profile. So <laughs> that's another thing that I would really like uh, with having Master Mode. But yeah, it's really unfortunate um, that that's not a thing. All right, let's just get this one over quick. Super Mario Wonder. Um, this game is just super fun. <laughs> you know, this is a little bit different from Tears of the Kingdom because Tears of the Kingdom, I'm saying that it was not hard enough for me. But the thing with Super Mario Wonder is it's a pretty easy and simple game. There are a lot of pretty hard levels in here and I have not gone to do the final level, but I've heard it's very difficult. It's just such a wonderful, <laughs> such a wonderful game um, that it's just so unique. It's just so refreshing to see. The new Super Mario Brothers series was just so bland and boring and man it was just so sad seeing new Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe as one of the top selling Switch games. Um, but Mario Wonder really takes a lot of inspiration from us. It takes a lot of inspiration from Mario Maker. Like, there are so many levels in Wonder that I directly see the inspiration from Mario Maker. And it's so cool because in a way, we are the ones that inspired the Mario team to create a game like this and every level is so different every level is so unique and fun and it's just so great and it's just a game that i feel like we should really celebrate because it's not trying to be something different it's trying to be something fun and that's what it is you know you can tell that the Mario team, they had a lot of fun making this game and it was just a blast to just go through the whole game and yeah, that's pretty much it. Next on the list is, oh, 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 it's Xenoblade 3. <laughs> uh, this game, yeah, this game came out in 2022, but the th thing that did come out 
for 2023 was the DLC for this game, Future Redeemed. And oh my God, it is incredible. This was my favorite game thing of last year. Like Tears of the Kingdom and Super Mario Brothers Wonder. Those are like, you know, they're great, but Future Redeemed was incredible. This was a DLC that was directly for Xenoblade fans. Just everything about this DLC was just incredible. It was just, it was an entire culmination of everything of the Xenoblade series and it meant everything to me. It felt like this DLC was meant for me, but that's because it's just meant for Xenoblade fans. And man, like, it's just so good. And like Xenoblade, like, you know, the music, the characters, the worlds, like everything is just always so good. Every god dang time. Takahashi, he just, he don't miss. This was the end of the trilogy. And I'm really excited to see what's next for Xenoblade or just, I guess, Xeno. It's, I can't describe it. <laughs> And, you know, I'm sure a lot of you maybe have not even even played a Xenoblade game, but yo, I highly recommend playing one, even if it's just one game, you know, because every single Xeno, Xeno game is incredible. And the thing is, is that if you are interested at all, there's this super sick trailer. Um, that's done by Sparks Opus, and man, he makes incredible trailers, and I really love his content. Um, but yo, definitely check, please, I'm telling you, okay? All right, I'm, I don't know where the heck, where does the card appear from? It, it appears from over there. I'm gonna leave a card, I'm gonna leave a description link, I'm gonna leave a thing at the end of the video, because this trailer this series is amazing and just check out sparks opus uh his trailer it's amazing it's incredible xenoblade is incredible and this dlc has solidified xenoblade as my favorite video game series of all time Moving away from games, I want to talk about something very special and big that happened to me last year. Is well, I proposed. Um, I don't know if you've noticed this box here, <laughs> but um, yeah, I proposed to my now fiance, um, and it was really, really great. Um, it, you know, it was nighttime. We had the nice lights above us and. And, you know, I got down on one knee and, yeah, I proposed. Um, it's quite the big step, um, but I'm so looking forward to be married to her and be together. There's nothing else that brings me more joy than being with her. So, yeah, that was definitely a massive, huge... Um, special uh thing that happened last year and yeah it was just meant a lot to me and meant a lot to her of course as well so yeah i look forward to um being together the next thing of one of my favorite things of last year was just one piece <laughs> and one piece has been going on for you know over 20 years but the thing is, is that the last year for One Piece was god dang incredible. One of the biggest arcs for One Piece finished, for one. There was the live action, which introduced new people to the wonderful world of One Piece. Um, and there was also something very big that happened in the anime. I have never felt such a... I don't know how to describe it, but One Piece last year 
gave me the most joyous laughing excited time just ever I don't know how to describe it but I've never felt that feeling before and it was just so fun and so incredible and I just love One Piece so much and it's so weird because I started watching One Piece I didn't even know what the heck it was <laughs> I didn't know what One Piece was. Like, I knew that Naruto was a thing, but yo, I started watching One Piece nine years ago. Nine years ago. Yeah, like I started watching One Piece just because it was about pirates. I'm like, well, I like Pirates of the Caribbean, so I'm gonna watch Pirates. And uh, dang, yo, I was not ready for the ride that I was about to go on because One Piece just, is still incredible you know <laughs> i don't know maybe next year this might be on my list too but one piece you know it's now reached into the final saga of the manga and anime and if you have not seen one piece read one piece watched one piece i highly recommend it it is such an incredible show, incredible manga. It is truly something special. And I'll let you in on a little secret. So if you're interested in maybe reading One Piece, if you're interested in maybe getting into One Piece, um, there's this app, which is official. It's the Manga Plus app. <laughs> um, and on this app, officially, you can read every single chapter of One Piece. Every single chapter, and that's all on your phone. All right there. If you wanna give One Piece a go, go check it out. Um, I can leave a description, or I can leave a link in the description, whatever. Yeah, check it out. On another anime note, is uh, Attack on Titan finished last year with the anime. Attack on Titan is such an incredible show and I, I've rewatched this show so many god dang times. This is the most fun show to rewatch. Like there is so much foreshadowing, so much different things you see with characters, so much stuff in the backgrounds. There's so much stuff that you see like in the beginning and you'll see like way later and it's just so god dang amazing the characters the music oh my goodness the animation just the world like everything about attack on titan is amazing and it was quite something seeing it end um there's a lot of anime that don't even get to end and it was really great that um, the show was able to find a finish. Every year, I do about three marathons of celebrating different video game series, and it all started with Zeldathon. Um, it was to celebrate the anniversary of the Zelda series, but also it was to hype up the release of Breath of the Wild. It was like a week away. Um, the Switch, but also Breath of the Wild releasing. And Zeldathon has been such a big part of my life and a big stress part as well. Um, it's always like the biggest event that I do every year. But the thing is with Zeldathon is I, as I mentioned before, I would play Breath of the Wild every year. But the thing is, is that it was about celebrating the Zelda series, and yet I was skipping so much of Breath of the Wild, and I wanted to change that. So to do a kind of final goodbye to Zeldathon, but also Breath of the Wild before Tears of the Kingdom's release, I did a final Zeldathon of just Breath of the Wild. 
And Zeldathon of the Wild was such a huge marathon for me. I don't think it was for anyone else, but it just meant so much for me. Doing Master Mode every single year and the improvements that I would make every year, I would struggle so much on the bosses, on the blights. Oh my goodness, don't even get me started. Yo, Wind Blight and him staying in this stupid orb and just healing all of his health back. Or Thunder Blight with the, the stupid metallic pillars. And in the second phase that he gets out a shield and then my whole strategy would just be pelting enemies with arrows so they wouldn't be healing because he would have a shield. I couldn't hit him and then he would just heal all of his health. But like over the years, I would improve my strategy. Like I would make entire routes. I would play like I would practice. I would basically make my own speed runs for these events just for Breath of the Wild. That wasn't even the other games. This was just Breath of the Wild that I would do. So this final Zelda-thon, I wanted to just have it chill. You know, I just wanted to to just do everything there was in Breath of the Wild. I wanted to do all the Divine Beasts. I wanted to do all the shrines. I wanted to do all the big major side quests. I wanted to do the DLC. I wanted to do the Trial of the Sword and all of it in Master Mode. And I did it. I did all of it. And the thing that just still shocks me still is that I did Trial of the Sword in Master Mode. I don't know if any of you have tried Master Mode, Trial of the Sword, but it is, oh my God, it is insanely difficult. And like, even if you just play Trial of the Sword normally, it's hard, but in Master Mode, oh my goodness. Yo, the second set of levels and that one room where it's just all water and there's these livos, li, lizophos. Yo, oh my goodness, yo. But I did it. I did it. And it was such a great feeling because that was something I did not think I could do. Like I had this whole bingo board of like stuff that we were doing and I had the trial of the sword on there. I was like, yo, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do this. But yo, I got every single thing on the bingo board and I just could not believe it. The final walk to Hyrule Castle, walking past all of these guardians, going, walking through and, and, and you know, getting locked in where there's, there's these lionels and I have never felt such a, like, I don't know how to describe this feeling, but never in a game have I ever felt this where it's like I have reached my peak, basically. <laughs> I, that final walk, going up to Hyrule Castle was a feeling I probably will never feel again. It was something that of just the years of pain and torment and routing everything and even finding out every single item in every chest and thinking of like every apple to grab by running by every tree and what armor to get in fairies and oh my god all this stuff and it didn't matter I was so overpowered I had everything and I beat Blight Ganon Beast Ganon and that was it that was the end of Zelda Thon of the Wild and I don't know if I could ever do a marathon after that. Marathons have been an extreme stress mountain 
on me every single year. And I don't just do Zelda-thon, I do Metroid-thon. I do the Super Mario-thon. I even did a Mother-thon. <laughs> and oh yeah, and that was the week before Metroid-thon. What was I thinking? Look at the camera, get ready. Say Fuzzy Pickles. It was just such a incredible journey um, with Breath of the Wild and that was kind of my final send-off with Breath of the Wild. That game has meant so, so much to me and it was like saying goodbye. It was kind of sad but also like taking a step forward to a new future, a new journey. I guess that was with Tears of the Kingdom, but also a new step and a new journey with my life with being engaged. So that really meant just the whole world to me. Um, yeah, also one thing I forgot to mention about um, being engaged with my fiance um, is that when Tears of the Kingdom came out, um, we got to play together like at the same time and that I think is another reason why I love love the start of Tears of the Kingdom so so much because of playing both together and it was so exciting um, we both met on a stream I was streaming and I was playing Breath of the Wild and yeah, she joined that stream because I was playing Breath of the Wild and Breath of the Wild in just so many ways has impacted my life and yeah, but yeah, it was just really great um, doing that with uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Yo, we're finally at the last thing with this video. This video took me forever to record. I don't know how long the final video is going to be, but oh my god. I don't know. I was just so nervous doing this video. It was really weird doing a video again. <laughs> but the last thing, and this has been a huge, huge, huge help for me, is this. And this was at the start. This is a Obonichi Techo. This is from the creator of the Mother series, Shigesato Toy. Um, I'm a big fan of the Mother series, um, as you can tell with Mr. Saturn staring at you this entire time. Um, <laughs> but this is, it's just, it's a book that you can make it whatever you want it to be. And I have this one for work, this one's for videos, and then I have this one for personal stuff. So this one's just a little one for me, and you can see it's like, it's all mother themed. You got a Mr. Saturn on the back, and then, you know, this one is mother themed as well. There's more than just mother themed stuff. Um, it's actually a pretty big business for a toy. Um, there's just some that are just mother related. So the thing about Hobonichi is that for every single day you get one page and you can have that page be whatever you want. You can have it be a checklist. You can have it as a diary. You can have it for practicing art. You can have it for sketching out stuff. You can have it for so much different things. Like, let's see, what did I write here? Yeah, you can have checklists. There's a habit tracker, there's monthly pages, you have like a calendar. There's so much great stuff about the Hobonichi. This has put me back on track on just being productive and just doing things that I actually want to do. Something like YouTube Shorts, not that I want to do that, but <laughs> I'm saying, YouTube Shorts is something I had a very big problem with. Um, and maybe some of you also have this problem where you're constantly looking at content, you know, with like that I had a problem with YouTube Shorts, but there's TikToks and there's Instagram Reels and there's, you know, there's so much stuff and it just, 
oh my gosh, like I just hate watching YouTube shorts. It drove me crazy, but I would just not stop scrolling. I could not stop. But with getting my Hobonichi last year, let's see, I have not watched YouTube shorts for 176 days, nearly six months, nearly half a year I have not. And that is just amazing. And I'm so happy to be YouTube short free. <laughs> um, and yeah, Hobonichi has been a huge, huge thing for me. I use it every single day. And you know, what I use it for constantly changes. I can use it for so many different things. And you know, one special thing, if you're a fan of One Piece, normally they're just blank. Um, but this one, as you can <laughs> not see apparently, uh, but as you can see, I'll, I'll have a closer up version. But this is a Hobonichi where every single day is like a motivational quote from um, chapters from One Piece. And it has little snippets and different things. And it also, every single day, it has a birthday of a character from One Piece. That just shows how many, <laughs> how many characters there are in One Piece. The one thing is that this is all in Japanese, but you can use a translator. But it is just, it is so god dang cool. And, you know, as you're going through the year, you are also going through the crew, you know, through their journey. Like currently right now, it's the 21st of February. And let's see, it is on chapter 196. It's um, during Alabasta. I love Hobonichi. It has literally changed my life. Um, and I'm still like constantly like finding new ways to use it. Um, there's just, just countless ways you can use it. And I would highly recommend getting one. Um, at least for me, I love writing down stuff. Like there's so many, like I have so many um, post-it notes in my desk of like sketching out thumbnails, sketching out stream overlays, sketching out all this stuff, you know, and now like I can have that all in one place. And another thing about Hobonichi is that it's so cool to just kind of look back at previous years. This is my one for 2024, but I have this one here, which was my 2023 one. Yeah, it's just so great with Hobonichi. And yeah, I hope uh, some of you have maybe found something I guess interesting, hopefully something interesting from this video. Um, I, it was really hard doing this video, um, but yeah, yo, now I'm gonna go play the Splatoon 3 DLC because that came out, yo, over an hour ago. Um, and also, yo, Mother 3 came out for the Switch. It's great for people in Japan that finally have that accessible. And yeah, it doesn't look like we're gonna be getting a English official translation, but there's always the fans translation, so. But uh, I guess that's been me. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you all in another video. Uh, hopefully soon. I do have a lot of video ideas in here, um, but I guess we'll see. Um, but hey, with my Hobonichi, I think I could, I think I could definitely get out at least one more video this year, uh, but we'll see. Anyways, uh, yo, check out Sparks Opus, uh, his uh, Xenoblade video, Spot, uh, read One Piece if you're interested, and yeah, that's all. Alright. Yeah!